Good morning. A chilly morning for the Hyundai Ionic 5 and our cold weather test of 10 to 80 percent when it's below freezing. Electrify America 350 kilowatt station. Let's see how we do. So back here at Auburn Mall at the Electrify America station here. But uh, this time it is way below freezing. We're at 18 degrees Fahrenheit here. So very different conditions to the previous week. But today we're starting at 9%. Just got here a little lower in the uh, cooler, cooler conditions. But uh, we'll try and go all the way up to 80%. See what the time difference is when you're comparing charging in 70 degree weather to charging in 17 degree weather. Let's go. Okay, so we're in single pixel territory, as you would expect. Not a fan of this little flappy thing, feel like that's going to fall off at any moment, but here we are. I think this was the same connector we used. Charging started from inside the car. Starting up with, as we said, still 40 degrees Fahrenheit, better part of on the battery. 62, 63 there, according to the station. Says. Reports the same and 38 minutes to 80% so obviously not quite starting at 10% but uh, nonetheless that's not going to make enough difference to change that time to 80% significantly. What you're seeing here is the uh, effects of a cold soaked battery pack so that we can kind of monitor where these temperatures go. Tinked up a little bit was at 39.7 degrees Fahrenheit, right here. Now it's at 40.2. You got the heater going to work. And what else do we have? 90 amps, 700 volts, a little bit above, and 11% state of charge. So you're talking about if we compare this, at least on initial estimates, um, an extra 20 minutes to get to 80% compared to regular warm weather, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, where it's already got that good start on the battery pack. It's not trying to make up this, it's trying to get to around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Roughly, I'll overlay what the uh, specific guidance for the Ionic 5 is, at least in the people who've tested it in Europe and uh, that's all translated from degrees celsius so it doesn't slip off the top of the tongue here but you can see the battery heats are going to work that's up another five degrees fahrenheit battery temperature average getting up to close to 41 degrees fahrenheit now and uh, the minimum down there at 36 degrees fahrenheit we'll see how this amperage starts to ramp up it's uh, already pushing 70 kilowatts from its initial start of 63, 62 kilowatts. So it's trying, but uh, it's gonna want a lot more action from the battery heater to really push that up. We'll do a little bit of a time-lapse here. So.
Okay, so this is set to shut off at 80%. And that, oh, we'll see that doing that there. Current battery level is higher because we've set the DC charger rate to shut off at 80%. So that's finishing the session. I'll have to check the minutes on the station here, but uh, with the battery temperature at 93 degrees Fahrenheit almost, battery heater ramping down now from that 86 degrees, and uh, battery at 80% state of charge, obviously. So let's take a look. Yes. So there we go, that's our final 9 to 80% in this case. 36 minutes, a bit ahead of the estimate, 60 kilowatt hours delivered. Would have only cost 12 bucks, not bad at all. And uh, that would be a $10 savings on this. Considering the temperatures there and considering the estimate of 38 minutes at the start, 36 minutes is not too shabby at all. We'll put all the data up over here, but that is not terrible performance by the Ionic 5 in winter conditions. So obviously some differences between these two sessions, the main being it was almost twice as long with uh, 37 minutes according to the Electrify America app compared to just under 19 for the warm weather session. So you're almost twice as long there, obviously you go over the 30 minutes of free charging so you have a little cost incurred as well but the main difference uh, that we can see is when we compare the power level delivered to the car so you can see it starts very low on the cold weather session uh, in double digits and we're already starting into triple digits low hundreds with the warm weather session and that ramps right up to just below 200 kilowatts from about 10 to 25 percent state of charge in the warm weather and then after that for the next 20 percent it's going above 200 to that max capability of the ionic 5 around that 230 235 kilowatt level does drop down around 50% in the warm weather session and kind of has a little cool off period before going to town again to 180 kilowatts and then tailoring down as it reaches that 80%. So much more plateaued on the cold weather session of course because it's starting low and not ramping up until it's confident that the battery has a temperature where it's warm enough to take that higher rate. So it's starting in those 60s and 70s uh, double digits only ramping up goes from that 10 to around 35% mark and uh, only ramping up when it starts to move to 40% and even then only slightly above 100 kilowatts. So you do get similar towards the end but that's after a lot of battery heating going on and uh, a lot of work by the car to try and get that pack temperature up to speed. So um, main thing being the takeaway, you know, almost twice as long a session, uh, which is not unfamiliar to EV owners. Um, and this is going to speak to Hyundai's ability to um, work on that battery conditioning in the software in future updates and whether they can make that something that can happen when you navigate to a DC fast charger or just something manually that the owner can toggle on when they know they're going to want to charge and be able to offset some of that slower charging at the beginning of the session. So there we go, 18 degrees Fahrenheit, 80% state of charge, considering the temperatures there and considering the uh, estimate of 38 minutes at the start, uh, even in frigid winter conditions, that is not terrible performance by the Ionic 5.